Hey, welcome back to my channel. My name is Courtney and today I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to just take you through the process of making this raffia tote bag and I'm using this raffia yarn. I've never worked with this before but I've already started crocheting and so far it's going well. I used to crochet all the time and I haven't in a few years so we'll see how this goes. I'm going to take you through kind of the ups and downs, what to do and what not to do. And hopefully by the end of this, we'll have a cute tote bag and it'll be easy, hopefully. And I'm going to line it with some white fabric so that when I put things in my bag, they won't fall through or get lost or anything. When I'm finished, I'm going to add the full pattern below so that you can make your own. So we'll see how this video goes. I'm kind of interested to see. The process of it all and how it works out so let's get started for this project you'll need a four millimeter crochet hook raffia yarn a sewing machine linen fabric a needle and thread and a yarn needle i began by making a knot for my crochet hook to go through and then i made six chains which is just looping the yarn around and going through the previous loop that i just made so I'm making six chains and then I'm going to connect my hook to the first chain and this is going to create a circle. This circle is what I'm going to work with to begin the bottom of the bag. So I finished off the circle by doing a slip stitch and connecting my working thread to my first chain. Then I inserted a safety pin to know where my circle began and then I went around the entire circle with a single crochet in every chain. To single crochet you insert your hook in the chain, wrap around the yarn, and then insert back into the chain, wrap again, and pull through both chains. I kept this going all the way around to make the bottom of the bucket bag and I'll write down below the exact pattern that I used to create the many rows to make the bottom of the bag. I kept going with the circle with a double crochet. The double crochet is a little easier to expand the circle without having to do single crochets and it leaves a little bit of room between all of the stitches when you crochet a little looser. And I like this because later on I'm going to line the bucket bag and you'll be able to see through the stitches to the lining. So I went around and I did a double crochet twice in every stitch to expand the circle. And then I realized it was getting a little wrinkly. So instead of doing two double crochets in every stitch, I did two double crochets and then one and then two again. And I'm writing down the sequence below so that you can see how to do it. So see how this is laying much flatter. Now I'm on my sixth row of doing the double crochet in the round and it's getting a little wrinkly. So I'm going to continue, but I'm going to go a little less on how many times I'm expanding by doing two double crochets in each stitch. I think that's making it a little wrinkly, but instead of going backwards, I'm going to continue and hopefully when I go upwards to make the bucket bag, it won't be as wrinkly. So after I reach the end of each row, I'm going to connect the row by inserting my crochet hook in the beginning stitch of the chain then wrapping the yarn around my hook, pulling it through, and this will create a slip stitch. At this point, I didn't want my pattern to become super wrinkly, so I just started sporadically adding two double crochet stitches, and right here I'm thinking about making it wider, so I added about three more rows of these double crochet to make the bottom of the bag wider and we'll see how that goes. To start the row, I chained three times to be my first double crochet. To double crochet, wrap your yarn around before inserting your hook into the stitch, then wrap it around again and pull through two 
of the stitches that are on your hook and then wrap it around once more and pull it through the remaining stitches and then repeat this process for every double crochet. When I wanted to work on the sides of the bucket bag and start going upwards, I flipped over the bottom of the bag and I single crocheted all the way around and then I inserted my hook and then when I reached the end, I did another row, but instead of doing a single crochet in the full stitch, I just single crocheted in the front of the stitch. And that is because I wanted to start working the bucket part of it. So I wanted the stitches to go upwards instead of outwards. As you can probably tell, this project was a labor of love and took quite a while. So I would recommend getting comfortable and turning on a great podcast or audiobook like I did and it makes it so enjoyable to just be able to sit down and work on this project. You can see how the edges are starting to curl up and now I can start working upwards. So to make the more net look, I chained six stitches and then I skipped three stitches and inserted my hook to do a double crochet. I wrapped the yarn around the hook and inserted it into the third stitch from my starting stitch. And then I finished off my double crochet and then I chained three and continued this pattern all the way around. So. I'm just continuing to chain three and then do a double crochet in three stitches from the one that I'm working on. I continued this all the way around and then when I started over, I just made sure when I'm repeating this pattern that I'm working on top of the row that I previously made. I started out by making one row of the net look and then I continued by doing a double crochet regular stitch all the way around the bag to make rows and layers. You can see how it's looking a little wrinkled here and I think that's because I was adding too many stitches. So here's where it's kind of looking more like a basket and not really like a bag or a bucket bag. It's going more outwards than I wanted it to go. Okay, so I came in to eat lunch. Um, and I'm changing my mind. Let me show you how big this basket is now. So I came to work while I'm having lunch and I'm pretty concerned at how big this, it, like, it looks like a basket. And here's my hand. And I feel like I need to start over, which is a really big bummer. Oh, this is a really hard decision because I spent a lot of time on this. The good thing is, is if I start over now, if I eliminate everything that I've already done, if I start over, then when I start going up to make the bag itself, it won't take as long because this is like over 100 stitches per row. And so that's like taking a long time. So, yeah, I think I'm gonna start over. To remove the stitches that you've already made, it's pretty easy. Just pull out the working thread and you can reuse the yarn, which is a big bonus. You can always reuse what you've used. And so I took it down to the main bottom of the bucket bag and I actually removed about four rows of the double crochets that I made in the beginning. And I just started over and it went a lot faster because I wasn't working with over a hundred stitches. I have the full pattern below of what I went with and so I decided to just get comfortable at home and watch a cooking show and I enjoyed just being able to finish off the bag. It actually goes really easy when you just do the netting look and I know it kind of looks like a when I got to the height of the bag that I wanted to end up with I ended up doing two rows of double crochet all the way around the bag and I think this gave it a nice binding look and later on it will be really helpful when I do the drawstring. I tied off my work and used a yarn needle to weave in the ends to the top of the bag. So it's looking pretty good. It looks like a fishing net which is kind of funny to me but 
I like it. And so I measured the width and the height and the diameter of the bag so that I can make a lining for it. And I used some linen that I had from a project I haven't worked on in a while. I made a makeshift circle using my measuring tape and a pin. You should probably use a washable pin for this, but I just grabbed what was in front of me. I sewed up the sides of the bag and then the bottom of the lining. Then I turned it inside out and inserted it into my bag. And then I saw at the top it was a little too tall, so I folded over the top, which I liked because it made it a clean finish and I just folded it twice to make about an inch of a hem and on four sides I just attached it with the needle and thread. To make the drawstring I used the raffia yarn to make a long chain and this will just depend on the diameter of your bag but I did about 50 chains and then I used the yarn needle again and wove it through the double crochet rows and I did this by skipping about four to five stitches at a time so that I could weave it through the whole bag and it would do the drawstring effect. And then finally I made the strap of the bag and by this point I was really ready to be finished so I wouldn't say this is the best strap but what I did was started by chaining six and then I double crocheted into the first row of three. And then I continued this by turning my work and double crocheting across again in the three stitches. And then I did this for about 25 rows and this created a simple strap. After I was finished, I used a needle and thread and threaded my strap in between my lining and the bag. And that is the finished bag. I'm so glad I picked up crocheting again. It's been far too long and so forgive me if I said the wrong terms or anything throughout the video. It's been a while. Thanks for following along, especially with the ups and downs of everything. This wasn't a straight shot to the end product. I'm glad I kind of worked through it and went backwards and started again. I think it yielded a much better product and I love the size of it. I love the shape of it. It's very summery and so I think it's a cute and simple project. It just takes a little bit of time and, and that's like most projects, it takes a lot more time than you think but I love the end product. So I'll see you next week with a new video. If you'd like to stay up to date with Rooney throughout the week, just follow us on Instagram and I'll see you next week.